This is Christian Kirk with the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in. One and all, back again, the fantasy footballers. Andy, Mike, and Jason. Excited to be with you. Excited to bring you another wonderful show. Excited to ask a very important question that I have for my good friend Jason Moore, which is, I mean, there are a lot of questions out there. We're, we're talking about the NFL draft, and it's staying on schedule and free agency. But I have to know this, and I mean this in the most respectful <laughs> sort of way this is have always how you, you want a question to start ha- have you eaten through your canned goods oh thank you for your consideration your question i want to make sure you are okay they're important questions i have not eaten through the canned goods i stocked up for a jason moore supply of canned goods and really i didn't i i don't feel like i overstocked i just keep getting more you know wh- wherever i ordered it from every couple of days uh, more cans show up as many as i'm eating and now, the nice thing is from my understanding, canned food is the healthiest food. I've gotten a lot of grief. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. gotten a lot of grief on Twitter for like, you eating canned food? What are you, dog? It's like, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of jokes regular... on you. My dog food comes out of a bag. Yeah. I'm not eating bag food. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing well. That's good to know. I, I am, you know, we're in the middle of a very difficult time as a country, obviously, trying to bring you some normalcy. Um, I do wonder if Jason will pretend that a pandemic is still happening in order to consume the levels of canned goods that he's currently consuming after we're done with this. It's a new way of life. It's a new experience that I don't want to give up. And I th- I'm, I'm, I'm putting on mass and I'm going to eventually cut down a la Mac. But not only are we bringing you some normalcy, but you want to know what else is, is normal and celebrated and wonderful in life pre and post COVID-19? What's that, Birth- Jason? Birthdays. Yeah. And Andy, it is your birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Whee! <laughs> it is my 36th birthday. I got you a bunch of canned Uh-oh. food. You got me a bunch of canned <laughs> That's a nice gift. The way that if, you guys. If Jason is giving his canned food to you, then yes, that is a, that is a selfless well, act from this guy. Look, the Spitballers podcast that we still got going right now, which is wonderful, and everybody, if you're wanting family-friendly uh, comedy, put that on. Uh, we need to do like a canned food draft, because people are like, what comes out of Ooh. a can? There's so many options. So, Everything. What you, Just I found out a- you can even get bananas out of a can. Can oh, you really? Col- color oh, me those, excited. Those have got to be terrible. Those have got to be gross. It says bananas in like heavy syrup. I mean, oh, the, oh so it's like, oh. The, it's like the fruit cocktail. Exactly. It's just but like, this isn't banana. fruit anymore. Uh, Are all cans disgusting. considered one serving? Is that why this is so <laughs> exciting? Yes, even the family size <laughs> when cans. When you pop it open, it doesn't matter. It's one serving. <laughs> one serving. Yeah. You can follow the Fantasy Footballers on Twitter, at the FF Ballers. Appreciate everybody listening, subscribing. You know, one of the easiest ways to support this show is to go subscribe uh, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to. We're also on Spotify, Google Podcasts. We're on uh, Stitcher Premium. So check those out. Very excited to get into it today. I guess in celebration of, of my birthday, Brooks has prepared a little game. Ooh. I want to play a game. All right, we're going to play some Who Am I? Is this a good one, Brooks? I mean, I, I'm going to check in with Brooks. How you doing? Hey there. I like to think so. <laughs> this is very exciting. You seem a little louder in my ears than everybody else, too, so I'm a little frightened at this point. <laughs> oh, no, he was loud. hey oh, how's everybody doing? <laughs> Pandemic Brooks is very enthusiastic. All right, in 2019, here we're going to play some Who Am I? Here are the clues. Okay. In 2019, I was one of three wide receivers with 1,100-plus receiving yards in 14 games played or less. Ooh, okay. I'm talking about a guy who qualifies for this uh, later this episode. So I've got a guess, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shoot my shot on on clue one. And I, I'll say this: I know the answer, but oh. after reading clue one, I feel like it's wrong. So cheater. We'll see. Clue number two: from weeks ten through seventeen, I was the wide receiver fourteen 
in fantasy points per game. Okay. Shoot. That's, so, oh, points so, per game. See, my guy missed the last so three not great. games. So I think I got to switch that up because I don't think you'd then put a, a run from 10 to 17. But uh, basically, it was really good second half of the year. Okay. All right, Mike. No guesses yet? No, not yet. I am not considered the number Ooh, one. I've got mine. I've got my guess. My I've team. got mine. And I think Mike should go first because, Mike, de- if it's who I think it is, because Mike he is def- the wide receiver one. Yeah, Mike should definitely <laughs> nail this. Yep. We're Because it's Michael Gallup. He, is it? That's who it I got. It is Michael yes! Gallup. The wide receiver one for Dallas. What I, who put these clues together? So you don't can you don't even agree with the premise of clue number three. <laughs> I you know what's funny is the first thing that went through my head on clue two was like who was good the second half of the year. And I'm thinking, okay, who is well, obviously can't be Cooper, who was hot the first half of the year, the second half of the year was not good, and then it's like but his counterpart, while he was yes. thinking, all right, well, we both got there. That was pretty good. What were that the other clues? Good. Yeah, we let's even, hear the other clues. I don't think we've ever gotten it this early, but like unanimously the correct answer. Okay. Uh, clue number four, I only had seven less targets than the wide receiver one on my team. Fewer. Fewer targets. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks Brooke. <laughs> and, and clue number five was simply... Nay. <laughs> that, that's it. A horse sound. <laughs> totally giving it away, galloping to the finish line. <laughs> so my third one was a bit too easy then, eh? Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I it's factually incorrect. Just, yeah, I yeah. think the third one was actually a really solid clue. I, I think it people was. out there uh, could still be stumped. That first stat's pretty interesting, eh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what are you, from Canada I'm now? I'm ca- Canadian today. <laughs> he threw two, two. Were those nays or a's? That's what I want to know. Uh, before we get into some news, I did want to draw attention to the website if you go to thefantasyfootballers.com because we have a rookie profile section. We've got a brand new rookie profile articles going up every single day. A lot of us, we don't have as much to do right now. Might as well read about some of these uh, incoming rookies. The NFL right now going ahead as planned with the NFL draft. So Can I, I talk wanna... about those for a second? Yeah. Dude, no. Th- look. We, you know, we we put out a lot of work. We've got a great writing staff here that is dedicated. They've they've been a part of this team for for years, most of them, and they they do good work. But these draft scouting profiles are phenomenal. They 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 are going back. They're watching tape. They're showing you in the articles the proof, and it's nice because they've done a ton of work behind the scenes. But they're not giving you all of that work. They're breaking it down to a, a consumable, easy to digest piece where. Read like these, one, it, one can, one it'll, can, oh, it's, just it's pop the, it open. It's the equivalent of high-end canned food, <laughs> uh, which I can't give a higher praise. <laughs> there's so, high-end canned food and there's oh, low-end canned what, food. What's the highest end? What's like? What's the, Are they the designer golden, brand? Golden the, cans? The highest end. You're talking nice chilies, nice stews. Ooh. Okay. All nice right. chili, nice stew. That's the high-end stuff. I okay. mean, we get down to the SpaghettiOs or off-brand SpaghettiOs, which are still good, but that's the low end. That's that's oh, gonna no. be. Are you buying great value SpaghettiOs? I've got I've got some off-brand. <laughs> <sighs> it's hard times, Mike. But it's you're true. saying these articles are high-end canned food. Yes, and uh, they are phenomenal. You, it, they're easy to digest, and if you want, you could skip <laughs> all the way down to the conclusion paragraph and just see the. They're not just all fluff pieces, you know. I some sometimes when people are scouting rookies, it's all just like, oh, "I love this guy. He's so cool." And this is the pros and cons of everybody. I love it. That sounded like the Vopo, the voice of public opinion, coming back out there. Oh not, yeah, hi. Not in these articles. <laughs> all right, let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league. All right, this is. There's, there's quite a bit of news. Cam Newton was released by the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Kyle Allen was traded to the Redskins. And so Teddy Bridgewater is the guy in Carolina, obviously. But he's got a new wide receiver to throw to. And I'm not, I mean, my face contorted in a way that was not attractive when this signing happened. As a dynasty owner of Robbie Anderson, Robbie Anderson signs a two-year $20 million contract with the Panthers. There were destinations I think I would have been much happier oh, with. Several. There should have been several. And what's weird about this, so today's show, like the main segment of today's show is uh, overreactions. And one of the things that I was, I was diving into it, I didn't end up going with this as my topic, but the, I, I, I'm trying right now to not overreact to Teddy Bridgewater's 
especially his last year where he just he did not throw deep. I, off the top of my head, I think it was like 7% of his attempts or something were 20 plus air yards. Like he just he didn't throw deep at all. He was very accurate on his deep throws. He actually was accurate as well. But what Matt Ja Rule is putting together over here in in <laughs> in Carolina, like I'm trying not to overreact to who Teddy Bridgewater has been and and like he has two great deep targets now with the addition of Robbie Anderson. Like Robbie Anderson's skill set, he's a very good field stretching wide receiver. I mean, he's tall, he's fast, he's got pretty decent hands. So I'm I'm trying to not can, overreact you, to what Teddy Bridgewater could do for this team. But what about reacting to what we saw of Bridgewater even in his Minnesota playing days? I yeah, think I was that, gonna I think that's the hard part is that this is a, a player who, you know, I, I maybe Alex Smith is a good comp situation where Alex Smith was able to still elevate a player like Tyreek Hill in well, that last Alex year. Smith in started Ka- ripping it that last in Kansas year. City. Maybe that would be the kind of optimistic view, but like still at the end of the day, I think Teddy Bridgewater in the examples we've been given prefers to control an offense in the short and intermediate. Yeah, I I, I agree. And I was going to bring up the Minnesota days. It's not just last year. Teddy Bridgewater is not a guy who slings it downfield. He's not a guy with a rocket cannon arm that, you know, that's his strength. Um, That being said, this signing, the way that I see it is this is a, this is a down arrow for where we expected Robbie Anderson to be. It's a down arrow for Curtis Samuel as well, because those two on the outside are going to be splitting. I don't see this having a huge effect on DJ Moore. I still think he's going to be the high volume possession guy. Um, but it is, it, Mike, you have to bring up that this is great news for Teddy Bridgewater. There yeah. aren't a lot of teams in the National Football League that have a better trio of wide receivers than Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, and Robbie Anderson. I mean, you got to go to. I don't know. The Arizona Cardinals, you know, with <laughs> Fitzkirk and Hopkins. Um, but you know, so this is this, and, and not yeah, only and, that, and but you've got Christian, Christian McCaffrey, McCaffrey guy running around. Yes. Yeah, I love Michael Keaton. I mean, he's yeah. going to be phenomenal. So Teddy is someone that is is interesting because I don't think he's going to be drafted in most leagues. Agreed. But his, but all of his options will be. And I'm those excited. Are the things that don't usually make sense. I'm excited to see what rule brings to that offense i mean it's just one of those things it's the newness bringing murder yeah well he might so the jets quickly replaced robbie anderson they signed brashad perryman to a one-year eight million dollar contract so they paid less than they would have had to pay for robbie not a a ton less and uh brashad perryman though flash at the end of the year is the last man standing in tampa okay sure i thought it was a smart move by the jets i mean if if you weren't going to get robbie anderson back you replaced him with a very similar player, a one-year, low-risk contract, low-risk for your team. I liked the move for the Jets. I think it is a smart move for the franchise. From the, f- the fantasy perspective, Robbie Anderson, I think most people would agree, and the money agrees, that he is a superior NFL wide receiver than Rashad Perriman right now. And Robbie Anderson, with Adam Gase, with this offense, was – highly inconsistent. And so I think at best you're going to have some big blow up games that you can't predict from Rashad Perriman. And so I I don't, I don't view him as um, someone that really matters for fantasy. I won't be drafting a a late round flyer thinking, Oh, maybe he'll take the Robbie Anderson role that we at times were excited about. I'm kind of hands off there, but I'm, I'm happy for Rashad Perriman. And from a real NFL perspective, it, it's not unwise to to offer a field stretching guy a one year contract when you just lost one. What about Tyler Eifert to the Jags? Two year deal. Okay. O- okay. <laughs> okay. Okie dokie. I think He's I'm handsome. learning something. I'm learning something this offseason. Tight ends are forever. I mean, the contracts that Jimmy Graham uh, yeah. just signed. I, uh, what do you think? Tyler what? Eifert is a very handsome man who. Uh, has <laughs> years ago he had an incredible touchdown rate, um, and he's been living on that hype. That forever. year was awesome, though. That year was awesome, and the hype was real. And I think it's just carried over. But if you're telling me that I'm supposed to be, you know, I'm gonna wait until long after some breakout has happened before I consider him a streamer. And the reality is, I, sh- I he did get paid, but you know, I shouldn't use the word break in a sentence with Tyler Correct. Eifert 
because it's dangerous. that's rude. It's 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 not fair to him or his body, which is also not fair to him. <laughs> his um, body is not fair to his body. It, it is. It's not. <laughs> but there are there are these off season moves that I mean, Perryman is the example of you know you add another field stretcher for Darnold, uh, Robbie Anderson for Teddy Bridgewater, Eifert might just be more helpful for Gardner. Then I completely agree with that. Yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah. that that's a situation that I think we're in. The Seahawks signed Philip Dorsett, formerly of the Patriots, to a one-year deal. What do you think of this move? He's sticking around. Good for you. Good for you, Dorsett. I mean, it's is Dorsett actually on the field in three wide receiver sets? Probably. So it's uh, it, it, he has no fantasy value for himself, but Dorsett can stretch the field. I mean, he's, it's another... It's another weapon for Russell Wilson to be upset that he doesn't get to really use. The first <laughs> week, yeah, seriously. That's exactly right. <laughs> the first week of free agency is where the pieces that signed matter for fantasy and we're saying, okay, how does it matter? How big, how small? And then this second week of free agency is these matter for the quarterback more than they matter for the player themselves. I don't think you're going to be playing. You know, Dorsett had a pretty good year last year. Like, five touchdowns in in basically about 10 games played but for fantasy you couldn't rely on him and and he's not going to have the target volume where you can uh do anything more than a DFS flyer and then it's another off season so we've got another signing of Devin S scrumptious oh! <laughs> I looked at last year's overreaction episode <laughs> And, uh, or I'm sorry, not uh, not overreaction, but the winners and losers episode. Right. And Devin Funches was a winner because because he was at this time last year, monster contract, one year deal, Indianapolis, Andrew Luck. Oh, Andrew Luck. Great. Is this Devin, um, Devin Funches owns oh. the month of March? It's his. So you, we we don't know, you know, the health. We we all all three of us talked about the Packers were going to go out and make some kind of splashy signing, whether it was a Robbie Anderson or somebody to to be on the other side of Devonte Adams. This is just a matter of is Devin Funchess any good at all? Is he is he going to struggle he coming healthy? off of a year? that has been injured. I mean, coming into last year, I think there was already disagreement, right? Mike and I were more fans of Funches than Andy was, if I'm remembering correctly. No, you were, correctly. you were, you stood alone on, on the oh, island I, with Devin Funches. Oh, okay. So it's all right. Well, that's fair. Um, but if I was the Funches believer last year, I don't, I don't think you stood luck, alone considering I had him as the winner of the off season. Cause he ended up in a perfect situation. Oh, okay. So maybe I it mean, was you and I that yeah, were I mean, in agreement and Mike that was opposed Who, whoever it was, but, I liked him last year, and I'm not sure I'm going to jump in as that wide receiver two narrative for Aaron Rodgers. Aaron well, Rodgers the team, hasn't the team's the different. Same. Yeah, the team's completely different than it was in the way it functions. So, uh, you know, if anything, Aaron Rodgers is about to retire. I think that's what this move means. <laughs> I'm looking at uh, Pro Football Reference. They often have a player's nickname listed here, and I'm looking at oh, Devin please. Funches. Please. And He's Please. got two names. Okay. One, is, one is Funch. Okay. Which, okay. Totally get it. The other one is not fun fun. Not fun fun? Can not really, fun fun. Not fun fun? <laughs> you really let me down thinking that Devin S. Scrumptious was on there. Oh, Wait, I'm so you sorry. You really, really let me down. No, it's well, not you fun gotta fun. understand, Andy. He's not fun fun. When you so, have a chance to have a nickname like not fun fun, why would you oh be Devin S. Scrumptious? If, if you could have a Devin S. Scrumptious nickname, but you were not fun fun, you not would, fun fun. You'd turn it down. <laughs> what a I think we're done with the news. Nickname. I think we're uh, done with the news. All right, before we move into the overreaction segment, want to thank today's sponsor. We're using it right now. Zoom. Zoom video. When you use Zoom, every day is a little bit better. Zoom video communications with the web's best-reviewed video conference service is used by millions to meet one-on-one -on -one or hundreds at a time. Their video conferencing lets you connect face-to-face -face with anyone across town or around the world using flawless video, crystal clear audio, and instant sharing of files, video documents, spreadsheets, anything helping you collaborate in real time just like the three of us we are not just for pandemics works for pandemics also works without a pandemic you can go check out our youtube show and we're recording it using zoom i'm not sure 
what what a better recommendation we could possibly <laughs> right. give. Like, this You're is, listening to yeah. this courtesy of Zoom. This is the perfect scenario where hashtag a sponsor and hashtag currently in use. So you got to go check them out, Foot Clan. We highly recommend it. They've been app, Zoom has been crushing it at this time where everyone has to jump on video conferencing. Zoom is handling their business. Yeah. You can visit Zoom online and set up a free account today. Try the most affordable and most reliable video video communication solution on the market. Meet happy with Zoom. Oh, did you say meet, Mike? Because I want to thank did. another sponsor, Omaha <laughs> yeah, Steaks, yeah. for all the meat. I mean, look, this time of year, right now, what's going on? It's like I go to my grocery store. Oh, there's no meat. You want to know where all the meat is? It's in my freezer. I already it's got in it my from Omaha too, Steaks. Man. And it's better than the garbage you're getting off the grocery store shelves look omaha steaks the longtime sponsor uh, most of you listening you've already gotten your omaha steaks if you haven't what's wrong with you right now they have uh, one of their great deals that they do for the footballers it's 186 dollar value for 59.99 you get two butchers cut filet mignons two bold and beefy top sirloins four premium pork chops four omaha steak burgers four gourmet jumbo franks potato au gratin caramel apple tartlets four of all of those an omaha steaks signature seasoning pass package plus mm. you're gonna get four more burgers four Woo. more franks for free Woo. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I'm telling you, Omaha steaks, they're the most tender, most flavorful. You we can did only two f- get them. From we did two Ameri- fillets, four Franks last night. Oh, and it was dude, spectacular. The, fr- the Franks, they're it's, humongous. Not fair, it's not fair to call those hot dogs because they're, no. they're, I That's mean, they're why Franks. They're, called Franks. They're, yeah, yeah. they're unbelievable. You can get this limited time stock up special. Uh, and the free burgers and Franks for just $59.99. It's a savings of 68%. Go to Omaha steaks.com and you type footballers in the search bar to add the ultimate grillers package to your cart today you won't be sad i'm not gonna do what you all think i'm gonna do which is just flip out all right getting to the meat of this episode here. I've been eating so many Omaha burgers. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, Omaha burgers are so good. <laughs> I know. I know. We've been grilling all the time. Yeah. I've never done so many dishes than in the past, like... Yeah, dude, I, I just tweeted about that. Like, my dishwasher has never seen this uh, amount Level of Level of use? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a 100% of days run. Like, you go to yes. bed, you, you run it, yep. you wake up, you unload it every single day. I've never oh, done that before a, in my life. It's such a weird time right now. It really, really is. It's so weird. I didn't realize how many of our sponsors were so conducive to pandemic uh, contingency we plans. We just happen to have the I mean, perfect sponsors. We beforehand. really do. We we got frozen meat showing up at your door, and we've got uh, Zoom. So, all right, overreactions episode. We each picked out a couple of potential overreactions that the fantasy community uh, might have from this past season and, and could benefit are- you if you see through them. Yeah, these are avoid this. Uh, you know, we, we call this the overreactions episode. It almost sounds like here's some things I'm overreacting about. These are, look, if you're going to be a good fantasy player, avoid major overreactions to narrative street things that happen. And so that, that that's the really the, the episode. It's avoid these overreactions. And a lot of overreactions happen based on, you know, recency bias in the back half of the season or the very end of the season and what certain players are doing. And we all want to react appropriately, but sometimes, you know, there are unsustainable situations that that you have to see through. So I'll, I'll kick it off with a potential overreaction, one that I've heard many times from many a fantasy analyst and individual in terms of how they view this player. And maybe you two both are on this on this train. We'll see. But the overreaction that I think is going to happen is that Ryan Tannehill is going to be viewed as a top 12 quarterback lock for next year. And the question that I have for, you know, I think for this show and into the future is, look, is the back half of last year, is that a true reflection of the fantasy value of Ryan Tannehill? Because from week 11 on, you had this 37 touchdown pace, 4,200 passing yards. He was complete. He had games where he was completing 77% of his passes. He was 70% over that span. It was really fun. It was super fun. And he's got A.J. Brown, and he's got uh, an exciting offense, and then they go into the playoffs. And Humphreys. They re-signed Tajay Sharp? No. But but I think... uh, No, they did not re-sign him. He went to Minnesota. We skipped that news. But uh, 
that probably Come won't Jason. hurt. That probably won't hurt that much. <laughs> but but the the situation that we're in now is you know how do you react to Ryan Tannehill? Because players we've seen this before. They have outlier runs. I mean, Nick Foles has done it multiple times, uh, and I don't think Tannehill is a top twelve lock. If you look at the playoffs, which you know are not part of that projection. Passing yardage in the playoffs, 72, 88, 209. We know the story. I don't want a quarterback that can disappear because a winning game plan lets him disappear, which is what happened in the playoffs. I mean, it's not like they were losing. You don't get three games worth of stats in the playoffs without a great run. So I'm worried about him disappearing when uh, things are going right. That's my concern. Mm. Yeah, I, I look... I am uh I di I differ with you a little bit. I don't differ at all that I think it's an overreaction to say Ryan Tannehill is a top 12 lock. Um I certainly think that that is a a massive question. I differ in the sense that I think Ryan Tannehill is it could very well finish in the top 12 and is worthy of a draft pick. Now I'm going to piggyback on this, right? Because my overreaction is his teammate AJ Brown who is everyone's darling. A.J. Brown is basically, I don't know if you guys know this, he is Randy Moss meets Jerry Rice, reborn and available for you with the first pick in fantasy leagues everywhere. <laughs> That's how it feels right now. He's and dynasty I, gold, I'll tell you that. Anybody who drafted him and then the way that season ended is feeling like they found a uh, yeah. million dollars. We can't trust ADP right now, but you can trust dynasty ADP, and where he's going is insanely high he's basically like the, you know he's going over known commodity studs because of the 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 pure unadulterated potential of him being a beast and if look if if you're listening right now you know at, at the end of march early april you probably listened to us last year we were giant aj brown fans i was uh, you know, leading the charge on my love for AJ Brown, huge fan. He was a beast. We recommended him a lot down the stretch. It worked out well. So why am I essentially pumping the brakes on AJ Brown and saying, I, I don't think he is a clear cut fantasy football wide receiver one, the way that the overreactions are happening. Some of that is what you just described, Andy. This, this is a team that when they win, they want to win throwing the ball five times and running dirty the ball 45 times and defense and, and, and all of that. Um, but there are certain stats that are insane for both AJ Brown and for the Titans as a whole. My, my favorite one from this last season is in once Tannehill took over and they were so prolific on offense, which is obviously a good thing, not a bad thing. But how they were so prolific is from week seven on, that was when Tannehill first started, they had 31 red zone touchdowns to one red zone field goal. It's pretty if good. They got, if they got in the red zone, you're not, you know, it was just like pretty much 100% you're giving up a touchdown, not a field goal, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you don't stop them. And that's not a normal number. That's not going to happen. The touchdown rate. I mean, A.J. Brown was a beast, was awesome, was incredible. He had 52 receptions. That's not the, you know. That's he, crazy. He had 52 receptions. Yeah, and, and we're it's viewing very him. D Jackson. Yeah, yes. and, and the thing is, is a lot of that was because he'd catch these little slants and it seemed like nobody could tackle the guy. He had 8.9 yards after catch per reception. Now, on one hand, that's why the hype is there because he just looks so beastly. But on the other hand, that's not going to happen. You're not going to have a career of that. Otherwise, you are what I described. You're Randy Moss meets Jerry Rice and you should take him in the first. He had the third highest yards per target ever for any wide receiver over 80 plus targets. There's just some numbers that I think you got to pump the brakes on this offense. The reason I'm in on um Tannehill versus Brown when I'm, you know, I'm kind of playing both sides is because of draft cost. AJ Brown is going to cost a lot. I'm willing to take the shot that AJ Brown is great and that Ryan Tannehill is great if it costs me a double digit pick, you know, as something in the 11th, 12th, 13th round and I can grab Ryan Tannehill there. A.J. Brown is going to skyrocket come draft season, and he probably won't be on many this, of my rosters. And I'll give you a chance to weigh in, Mike, because I want to hear your thoughts on the Titans overall. But this feels like disrespect hour for the Titans offense and Tannehill and A.J. Brown. It's not meant to be, but it, it's almost uh, giving them credit for being so outlandishly good. 
over the back half of the year and what that means for uh, fantasy owners, Mike. Do you think that, are you concerned that you're going to have these two players disappear on a regular basis? That's my biggest concern. Not that they'll be great sometimes, but that you won't be able to rely on them because this offense can win with 70, 72 yards passing, which doesn't help either of them. I think that they will disappear. It, it will happen, but it won't be the norm. Like, I think they'll be good more often than not. And like what I'm looking at is they just gave Ryan Tannehill that monster contract, right? I mean, and it the the newest quarterback quarterback contract always looks like it's insane because it's the new standard. So I'm not saying he got overpaid, but he got paid very very well, paid to be a franchise quarterback. And Derrick Henry is on a one year deal right now. Uh, so it's like the team says, Ryan Tannehill, you are the solution. Derrick Henry, we're not willing to pay you the money that you want yet. I mean, we could get towards the season, and all of a sudden Derrick Henry has a long-term contract. Just saying that that Ryan Tannehill is there for the long term. A.J. Brown is currently there for the long term. So they're going to be used. There will be games, though, just like the playoffs, where Tannehill has under 100 passing yards and you're ripping your hair out. But overall, I think they will both be they will both be solid for fantasy. Would you you'd rather have Kirk Cousins as your quarterback than Ryan Tannehill? Right? Are we talking fantasy or real life? G- give me both. Fantasy, uh, I would rather have Tannehill. I fantasy, think both. I, fantasy, sorry, I think no. I'd take Tannehill, but real life, I would take Kirk Cousins. Yeah, yeah, I, I can agree with that. I think the the thing that's you know a little bit lost in in Tannehill, some of those games in the playoffs where he had you know, sub 100 passing yards weren't actually bad fantasy games because he ran on the ball a lot and had rushing touchdowns. Right. Um, you know, that's something Kirk Cousins isn't going to add quite to the same true, degree. True. And both teams want to win by not throwing the ball a lot. So y- you've got that same issue both sides. Okay. Mike, you have an overreaction for us. All right. I will not be overreacting to the Patriots offense, especially I want to talk about Julian Edelman. I won't be writing him off without TB. <laughs> TB12. And I can see the faces of my colleagues here who are not buying into what I am talking about. I thought I muted my face. I, you can see this. <laughs> my bad. And here's here's my defense of Julian Edelman. Yes, he is old, but he's, he's but he also has up. no Tom Brady. No, he that's correct. He has no Tom Brady. Just hold on. He just posted, uh, speaking to his age, he just posted the highest receiving yardage total of his entire career. He's already broken the age curve. Like, he's already an outlier to the point of, I'm not going to say, okay, this is the year that that Julian Edelman is going to fall off the cliff because he's already multiple years over it. Like, guys, just there are some outliers who get to play into uh, into upper years that most players don't get to do. His consistency since he has taken over the role uh, for the Patriots slot wide receiver, 66 yards a game, 69 yards a game, 77, 69, 71, 70. Like, he is so unbelievably consistent. But here's the point I want to bring up for without Tom Brady. In 2008, Matt Castle was forced to be the starting quarterback because Tom Brady tore his ACL right in that first game. Matt Castle was fine. Like, his production, 327 completions, almost 3,700 yards, 21 touchdowns. He supported two top 13 fantasy wide receivers, Randy Moss and Wes Welker. No, I'm not saying Julian Edelman is Randy Moss, but Julian Edelman is just as good as Wes Welker. And that year where seventh round draft pick Matt Castle had to start, Welker put up 111 receptions, almost 1,200 yards, only three touchdowns, but PPR machine and was the wide receiver 13. I don't need whoever comes in at quarterback for New England to be himself a production machine because they're going to go to Julian Edelman. He's still going to see a whole bunch of targets. And so I I think that come ADP time, Julian Edelman is likely going to be underdrafted yet again. I think come ADP ADP time, you will have Julian Edelman on all your teams, which is... Which is what your point? Him. What your point is? I mean, he he'll be 34 when the season begins, and he'll be starting over with a new quarterback. So he will be in a position where, if what you're saying is true, he will be a massive value. Uh, yeah, I mean, that. I I agree completely that he will outperform his ADP because nobody's going to want want him. Just look at Andy and I's face when you 
uh, throw this out there. Nobody's going to want him because the upside isn't there. Losing Tom Brady, being older, he'll almost certainly outperform his ADP because he will be the number one on his team. If you're in a PPR league, a full PPR, he will have enough receptions to be relevant from time, you know, consistently someone that if you've got a double flex, you're going to be happy that you've got him there. The question is, will that be enough to matter to me? Frank Gore, year after year after year, outperformed his ADP. It didn't really matter much towards the end. I think I think it's a style thing for fantasy. Like Edelman's not going to be the kind of player on my team just based on how some people play with the potential upside. Even last year with Brady, he was only in the top 10, um, I think, three times over the course of the year on this on this super sure. year of where Only he had in the receiving top ten, it. but how often was he a top twenty four? Why I don't have the often, numbers. Often, very. Of I mean, I, yeah. I can tell you, it was uh, that's all I want. nine nine out of sixteen games. You're going to yeah. get Julian Edelman in that range. I just I want to know who's quarterback, and I want to know what, how big that drop's going to be. Because if you take twenty percent off of what he did last year, I mean, maybe that that seems like best case scenario. Mm. See, that's that's what I'm talking about. I I believe this is why you'll have so, him. I believe so much in Bill Belichick and his offense and it, that he will get it together that I think Julian Edelman will be a massive draft steal. Okay. Uh, here's an overreaction that I think will take place. I mean, we were beautifully distracted last just last week by Bill O'Brien. Oh, Bill. Oh, Bill. I'm so thankful to Bill. He distracted He's a great us guy. from all that was going on out here in Arizona. We need and to he, get a signed picture from Pristine Auction and hang it in the studio. Oh, of Bill O'Brien. Yeah, 100%. I'm on it. Oh, yeah. Take care of that. <laughs> and he gave us this distraction when he traded DeAndre Hopkins away and he got David Johnson. Now, David Johnson is a perfect example of a player in fantasy. Between the social media, the public fallout, the, the deep scarring fantasy burns that David Johnson has left on owners for multiple seasons dealing with injury and underwhelming performances on the field. I think it will be very easy to react to this deal focused on Hopkins. Ignore David Johnson. The narrative of David Johnson is done, is already out there. Let's make fun of Bill. But I want us to remember the situation and circumstance David Johnson is actually walking into next year with Houston. First of all, they're obviously paying him a lot of money. They're paying his whole salary. They made this trans uh, this transaction and they acquired everything that David Johnson is, including that salary. But you also had a situation last year where a player that was almost certifiably done, that was cut by Kansas City, Carlos Hyde, comes in and has... I think Kansas traded him. Okay. Per, but I'm, but no, barely no, but preceding a cut. Yeah. No, I mean, no, they, your, your, your point is well made that he was, he, no one wanted out. him from San Francisco. He, then he was cut by Jacksonville. And yeah, I, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah. And, and you had a situation where all of a sudden Carlos Hyde is very, very relevant for fantasy owners on a weekly basis. In fact, he was top 36 in all but three of the games he played in last year. Now, he wasn't a, a world beater, but he was Carlos Hyde getting the rock in that offense. We already know that David Johnson's a world-class pass catcher. I mean, that's, that's something that yeah, he, he did not show any disintegrating uh, you know, ability last year. Hopkins just evaporated from this offense. DJ was the main uh, you know, pickup in that trade, and I think we all agree Deshaun Watson's a good quarterback and he can move an offense. So to me, David Johnson is that player that, look, you can't call me a homer anymore because he ain't on my home team, <laughs> but he's in a situation where he's going to have massive opportunity he could see a lot of passing game work that, you know, uh, we don't expect because of the Hopkins uh, move. But either way, he's going to be a better than Carlos Hyde is my point, which means you're going to have a player that I think you can rely on as a running back two type of player. Yeah, he's not going to be irrelevant. He, he, you're not paying him that money and trading DeAndre Hopkins to get him to have him be irrelevant. So even if he is, you know, sometimes we talk about is he washed as a runner because he looked slow in the system. Even if he's lost a step or two, he will be relevant in fantasy. Uh, you know, you saw that like like your yeah Hyde had lost so many steps. Yeah, like fifty uh, steps. Carlos Hyde, uh, you know, even before the injury, Lamar Miller was looking a little slow. He was relevant for fantasy. I think. Where I mm -hmm. am on David Johnson is I, I don't think his I don't think he has any more elite years ahead. You know, maybe if he gets in the top twelve, I think he's going to be back in, and I don't think the receiving work will be there with Todd Watson. Gurley, David Johnson, 
Who do you think has a better year last year? Because I think we mm. all agree the elite years of, of Gurley performance are probably gone. But the situation, you guys talked about him being a back-end guy. Who would you rather have? I would rather have Gurley. Man. I, I think I'll take DJ. I think I'll take David Johnson. What's interesting... Uh, that's, a, that's a tough one, though. It's very yeah, it, tough. It is a very tough one. It, and what's tough for David Johnson is like where he can really get it done and really help this offense is being a pass catcher. We haven't seen Deshaun Watson with the tendencies to check it down, but he's always had DeAndre Hopkins. He's had a guy who, if has if there are two people on DeAndre Hopkins' back, like he is giving them a piggyback, DeAndre Hopkins is still open. You can yeah. still throw him the ball. And yeah, he he plays for the Cardinals now. In case you were curious, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pretty we're pretty happy about that. Thanks, uh, Bob. It, but w what's interesting is we've talked about this. We've referenced it. But our editor in chief, the Borgogan, he when he went and he was looking at vacated targets, he found that there was a an uptick in usage of passing to the running back. And uh, a great friend of the show, JJ Zach Reeson, has been talking about vacated targets. Of we need to look at targets be as a as a, uh, a a skill statistic, like a wide receiver has to get open to earn a target. I mean, right. regardless of if right. they catch it, and you can't just say, okay, well now all these targets go to Will Fuller because he, of course, he will get open. It's like maybe people aren't getting open, and now that those tendencies that we've seen from Deshaun Watson to not throw to the running back, now listen, he has to because people aren't getting open like he was when he had an, the elite DeAndre Hopkins. So it's. That that's a one like I can't that that's a time will tell situation, but it's a I do see the scenario where all of a sudden David Johnson is back in that fifty reception area where you simply couldn't project it at the beginning of the year. All right, yep. uh, is it Jason's opportunity? I yep. am all up. Right. And th th this one to me is is easy, and and really this is almost pumping the brakes on myself because I had this thought initially, like oh no, what happens to Mike Evans now? Jameis Winston is gone. All those picks and having to come back and throw deep and also having no fear to just say, go long and, and throw the ball over and over uh, deep down the field to Mike Evans. Now Tom Brady comes in. He no longer has a deep ball. He's not throwing it down the field. It's Chris Godwin in the Julian Edelman role. Yada, yada, yada. All this news makes people, I've seen it on Twitter, can left, I, right, and center. Can I jump in and say I'm one of those people that I, I was asked the dynasty question whether Melvin Gordon in the 107 was better than Mike Evans. And the first thing I thought of was trying to process Mike Evans with Brady and what that means. So I'm excited to hear well, yeah, so the remainder of this. You're who I'm talking to. Th I thank think, you, sir. Yeah, and only you. Everyone <laughs> so technically else. Technically, you're talking to both of us right now. Yeah, well, oh, mute, is Mike still here? <laughs> yourself. Um, hey, everybody. Look, J Jameis Winston, yes, he was a gunslinger. Yes, he throws the ball down the, the field and, and needs to because he gets in deficits. Also... He's not as good as Tom Brady. Just a fact. He's not as accurate as Tom Brady. I'll he doesn't read a defense as well as Tom Brady. He doesn't exploit defenses and take advantage of situations. He's not going to be as good in the red zone as Tom Brady. Certainly I mean, not he, as handsome. I'm he's, sorry, Jameis. He's definitely, I mean, look, <laughs> Tom Brady, if he's looking that good in his 40s, I yeah. want to be, I want to be like Brady, man. Oh, um, yeah. Just eat some veggies. Mike Evans from a can is a great <laughs> oh always from a can. I wanted to post a poll oh. of canned vegetables versus frozen vegetables because to me oh it's frozen. I like oh I see frozen vegetables are disgusting. They oh. end up turning out awful every single time. C give me canned you know and I'm talking you know green beans and corn and all the normal like canned vegetables. That's so much better wow. than the medley frozen crap. I've always gone no vegetables, but it's well, yeah, not a good I mean, time. That, that, I mean, that is that's better. the best. Yeah. But my point is this. Mike Evans didn't lose a step. Mike Evans didn't become a worse wide receiver. He's 26 years old. Oh, Mike Evans is incredible. He's never had a season without a thousand receiving yards. And we're acting like him going to Tom Brady is going to destroy him. Stop it. He's got a better quarterback. The Vegas, you know, over under right now on his touchdowns is 30. Divide 30 touchdowns up and you're going to be just fine. Mike Evans over, you know, his career, including his sophomore year where you had three touchdowns, has a 16-game pace of nine touchdowns a year. 
And I think Tom Brady is going to be able to use a great wide receiver in really solid ways. So I, you know, I'm going to take advantage of buying the Mike Evans dip because I'm buying a dip of Mike Evans because he got Tom Brady as his quarterback. I think people want, I think people wanted a reason or an argument or an opportunity to just make a decision between the Godwin Evans. And this gave them the opportunity to definitively say, I'd rather have Chris Godwin. And I would too. I, I would rather have Chris Godwin than Mike Evans. But the the point is those aren't mutually exclusive. La, you know what I mean? Like last year yeah. on a points per game basis, everyone knows Chris Godwin was unbelievable last year. On a points per game basis last year, Mike Evans was the wide receiver number three. <laughs> so like the, it's not uh it's not a uh, Mike Evans is the clear two. It's a one A and one A situation. If I have to draft one of them, I'm I'm gonna take Godwin ahead, but I'm drafting both of these guys early, and I I believe you know, in that system. And and a lot of times people will look to the uh, total targets last year. I think it was like 118. And you forget that Mike Evans basically didn't play his last game and then missed three games. He was on 155 target pace. And yeah, that was with Jameis. So the target number total will, uh, as a team, come down. But the target quality will go up. And that was still with Chris Godwin having broken out and with Arians running the show. So, uh, you know, the Mike Evans uh, dropping like a tank uh, dropping like a tank? Dropping yeah, that's like, a uh, yeah. very common, look, very yeah. common phrase. Yeah. Mike Evans dropping like a tank. Like a, that's it is right. going to drop. You don't. Yeah. Yes, Mike Evans dropping like a tank is a narrative I'm not getting drop behind. Dropping like a tank. <laughs> drop it like a tank. <laughs> now that's dropping it like an AJ Brown. Was that right? Oh, oh yes. very nice. All right, Mike, you're up. All right. So my last one is I am not going to overreact to the Steelers' dreadful year mm. it was a terrible year oh, for so Pittsburgh uh the Pittsburgh offense it was rough they were 27th in points 30th in offensive yards but the previous five years so five years straight when Big Ben was the quarterback for Pittsburgh they were top 10 in points top seven in yards and if in those five years they were top four four out of the five. So, I mean, like, they're putting up yards. And, yes, I get it. Antonio Brown was a huge reason for a lot of those yards, and he's gone. But I believe in Big Ben in this offensive system for Mike Tomlin. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, uh, and just, again, to highlight how bad they were, of quarterbacks with 100-plus attempts, Mason Rudolph ranked 34th in passer rating, and Duck Hodges was 40th. Their quarterbacks sucked. <laughs> but here's what's happening. Here, right now, current best ball ADP. James Conner is being drafted as the running back 24. Two years ago, he was the running back six. And if you're thinking about, well, are they going to replace him in the draft? Pittsburgh doesn't have a first-round pick. It's much harder to spend a day-two pick on a running back, which is not a position of need, when you do not have a first-round pick. Juju Smith-Schuster, who was the wide receiver nine two years ago, and the wide receiver 16 in his rookie year is being drafted as the wide receiver 13. Not even being drafted as a one. Big Ben, who the past two years when he was healthy finished as a top 10 quarterback, is being drafted as the quarterback 18. Like People are completely dismissing this offense because of what happened last year. And yes, I completely admit this is a bet that I'm making that Big Ben is still going to be able to play football and play at a higher level. I think he will be able to do that. That's my so, biggest question: is whether so, Big Ben goes the, you know, the Cam Newton role, sure. or, or direction after injury, or whether we have old Big Ben back. He certainly has a strong beard game. So, so his I understand beard game the respect. is, and it like the beard game. I mean, it's it's big, but I mean, <laughs> that is the, that is the game. It is big. It is not good. It is. <laughs> I mean, it is it is downright. When, it when looks that, like that has to be unhygienic. Like it can't be good for him to support that nest. It looks awful. When that well, it's part of his neck Twitter. neck weight training. It's it's actually oh, very yeah. very important for getting back. <laughs> it's if a you very have, heavy beard. Yeah, but the I just I really believe that the that come like and these are best ball. So let's see what happens with when the regular ADP hits. But I think that the Pittsburgh Steelers are looking like draft day values right now. I feel like I am in a position, and I'll ask you, Jason, to weigh in. But I don't. I'm not going to react at all. 
I think I'm just like I'm I'm not looking for value in Pittsburgh, but I'm also not I, I, I acknowledge the fact that look, I might not have loved Juju the way other people did last year, but it doesn't I mean, he lost Big Ben. There's no there's no evidence of what the offense could have been and what it couldn't have been. So and, and then you have the injuries with Connor. So for me, I'm almost just on the sidelines for this one. Where where do you weigh in, Jay? Yeah, 2019 is a deleted season. I don't I don't weigh in what we saw there from a production standpoint from any player across the board. Obviously, you got to take what you saw in in you know rookies like Deontay Johnson showed flashes because that's the only uh, NFL action that you can see. But that doesn't exist to me. The only thing that does factor in is now higher risk. So when I'm looking at, at putting these guys out there, I'm going to stat them out there probably like they're going to be the Steelers that they've always been. I mean, th Big Ben's 38, but we've got a lot of quarterbacks now. You know, you look at Breeze, you look at Brady who are playing into their early 40s and still playing well. Now, will Big Ben's coming off an injury. So that, that makes it more difficult. So I'm going to stat them out like they're going to be the same old Steelers, but I'm going to have a much higher risk rating, which will mean when I, when you're at a draft, if they're not at good value, then I'm going to probably tie break somewhere else. The, the, the thing I think Mike is highlighting is looks like they might be at good value. I mean, if Big Ben is quarterback 18, so what? If he gets injured or isn't good, the upside there of him being, you know, the same old big Ben, it comes for free. I mean, you could pick him up after the draft if he's the 18th quarterback in in a lot of leagues. Well, the, the, the hard thing with big Ben is that you get to now see the outcome of no Antonio Brown for real. I mean, we didn't, right. this was the story of all last off season was we were saying, okay, can he be, cause he was always a, a, a quarterback that you'd have a, a couple good years, but you also had some years where you know, he, he, he wasn't a top tier fantasy option. So that question is still on the table. You just have an extra year and an extra injury compounding the answer to me. What's insane to me is what did you say, Mike? They were 27th in points, 30th in yeah. yards, and they were a hair away from making the playoffs. I, I still think Tomlin is a great coach, and that's part of why the I'm, defense turned into an elite one there at the end. Which is crazy because oh, the first four weeks, they were just about the worst defense in the league, and, and they were like, okay, well, we're not going to win with offense. We're going to have to change things around. I, I just think he's well, a, they, a good coach. Yeah, they, uh, they also traded for an outstanding uh, defensive back. So, uh, okay, I, I, I will be very curious to see what big – it's better for the NFL that he is back and that the Steelers have him, and then we get to – you know, at least see Juju and Connor and these this offense come to fruition in some fashion. And and you're right. I think a lot of people are, are going to be like me, stand on the sidelines, and that will drive that ADP down because of the uncertainty. So uh, I want to thank Pristine Auction. Now, Brooks Brooks picked out a couple of very special Pristine Auction items that sold. I guess he, he found them. I want to thank Pristine Auction. A signed Bill O'Brien jersey. No. What? no. What? 40, Are these real? $46, but there was also one that sold for $18. It has Coach O'Brien stitched on the back. Oh, man. <laughs> it sold for $18 on one of those. Wow. No no one in Houston is buying those. No, oh, that's, no, all, that's all being shipped to Arizona. <laughs> oh, sure. but, if, but if you notice, the one that was $18, that was on March 18th, and then March 20th. That was the $46 one because Arizona fans are starting to bump up, up the price. Uh, Frame that you, jersey. <laughs> if you want a real player, a Kenny Galladay signed Lions helmet went for $47 yesterday as well. Hundreds of daily auctions, pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. I think that does it, boys. I think this that's a fun it. one. Don't overact, people. Unless it's canned food. And then you buy so much. Always, always hoard the canned That's food. not the message. The message no. is don't hoard the canned food. We're yes, going right. to be all right. Take See care, you next everybody. Time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. Ballers.